Hi and welcome back to another video today, another episode of Viewer Mail because Max reached out to me several days ago. He said that he was running a system with a 7900X, everything was working fine for several weeks and from one day to the other, like out of nowhere, the CPU was showing 00. zero. Well, the mainboard postcode LED was showing 00, zero, which was kind of like odd but still this could happen right your cpu or mainboard could die and when he like disassembled everything and cleaned everything he reached out to me and said roman i'm not sure what happened but suddenly i have liquid metal on my cpu even though he did not use liquid metal he used conventional thermal paste and i said this doesn't really make sense so please show some pictures to me and what i saw i couldn't really believe it but that's what we're going to check out in a second. I just want to point out first that I sent him a 7900X 3D in return so we can take a look at his CPU and at the same time he can enjoy a new CPU and already have fun with his system again. Hetzner now offers a new dedicated root server powered by a Ryzen 7 7700 CPU which you should definitely not miss. The AX52 starts at 59 euro per month and is equipped with two one terabyte NVMe SSDs, gigabyte connection and as usual unlimited traffic. The powerful 8 core CPU is paired with 64 gigabyte of DDR5 memory by default but can be upgraded to up to 128 gigabyte DDR5 memory and even with ECC if required. You will benefit from Hetzner's excellent service and of course there is no minimum contract period. Find out more in the link below. So you know what I'm talking about, check this out. Because this looks like a blob of liquid metal, but if we touch it, it's solid. And we also have some like tiny pieces like directly next to it on the left. I had no explanation for this, especially when he reached out and showed me like pictures and videos. I said, this doesn't really make sense. Like I have no clue what this is. But then thinking about it, I thought maybe the CPU had like a failure of temperature protection or something like that and this way the CPU got so hot that it actually unsoldered itself and died. That is something I think could have happened and we will try to investigate this. Now the question is how can we even investigate this because if we would just take a deliter and move the IHS back and forth I have the feeling that we could maybe damage something underneath or at least we could make it look different than what it looks now. So I'm thinking about maybe taking the CNC mill and mill away one part of the IHS and then maybe with the macro, macro lens we can take a look like in between. And after that I also checked out he was using X670E Aros Master which I also have. Uh, we will try to like replicate this with the same like board and BIOS version and maybe check out if there is some issue with the over temperature protection. We fixed the 7900X inside this lapping tool and this way we can clamp it inside the CNC and then mill away like the top area here of the heat spreader. Now we have the CPU securely fixed inside the device. One quick check, but that looks good so far. Right now like two millimeter depth and we still have to go additional like four millimeters into the back because we don't want to damage anything on the PCB or like the chip. As reference, we're always double checking with this 7600X that we did it quite a while ago because we just don't want to like cut into the chip. But also like the depth we're going right now is like 3.5 millimeter and that would not like go into the chip, just into the solder worst case. Now that we couldn't find anything on the I.O. die, like everything looked kind of normal, we will try to close in on one of the CCDs from the right. We now closed in to the CCD on the right and I think same as on the I.O. die, I cannot really spot anything unusual. So I think we will just continue to do the same thing on the left. Kind of the, I would say the most complicated and expensive deleting I did so far or <laughs> most obscure way at least. That's pretty crazy. I mean if we just pay attention to the edges, like the corners where we closed into the like the chip with the indium solder. All the edges IO die, left CCD, right CCD. Seems like there is solder everywhere. It's pretty obscure. 
kind of unexpected, but nothing was visible, at least looking from all the edges for IO die, CCD and everything. That's the reason why I left the bottom corner, so we can still use uh, the litter and then push away the IHS and maybe look underneath. I even have to check because the like, solder piece is still in the way. If I can even fit the litter on. Hmm. Yeah, with a little bit of pressure it should work. The deliter only allows about one millimeter of movement and you can also see that by the additional amount of like solar that's revealed underneath. But that's not enough to like loosen this part entirely. Might be that we have to go with the traditional Weiss method. You can see, got loose. Mm -hmm. I think we were pretty spot on with our first assumption, especially if we look at the heat spreader, the area between the CCDs and the IO die, there's like this additional piece of indium here. This is not normal. I've never seen this on any other deleted CPU before and that's also probably why this excessive amount of indium is like hanging off to the side and you can also see some voids inside the solder here like bubbles. It looks like bubbles. And we see the same on the CPU, like areas here and here we have these voids that I've never seen on any other deleted CPU. And we deleted a lot of Ryzen 7000. This is definitely unusual. And since we know that the CPU worked for several weeks, I would also say that this was not a manufacturing mistake. After investigating my images later, I noticed a few more things which I want to discuss with you. And first of all, we're looking at the CPU in the condition where the heat spreader was still attached. On the PCB, we see some slight damage which probably occurred while one of the like feet of the heat spreader got ripped off during the milling process. And at the same time, it also ripped off three of the SMDs. But I mean, CPU is dead anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But what we can see nice and clear are the different layers of the CPU. On the bottom, we see the chip surrounded by underfill that looks like a glue. This is to additionally secure the chip on the PCB. Directly above, we can see the solder layer that is contained of indium. Above, we see the 3.4 millimeter thick heat spreader. And because we know this thickness of 3.4 millimeter, we can easily just do pixel measurement and determine the height of the indium layer. And we had about 235 pixels for the heat spreader and about 24 pixels for the indium sheet which then equals about 0.35 millimeter for the indium layer. And I know this is not like totally accurate and scientific, but even with 10 or 20% tolerance, we still know that it's somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4 millimeters. Now investigating the edges of the IO die, everything looked kind of normal. I mean, that's what I wanted to do with this entire like milling away the heat sweater checking the edges of the chips and checking the edges of the CCDs, both for left and right, they all look good. So it's not like all the indium is gone, like at least on the edge, it looks pretty normal. Paying more attention to the heat spreader from underneath, we can find more interesting aspects and especially between the area of the IO chip and the CCDs, because like you can see this gold layer, which is for better wetting conditions during the indium solder process. And typically this area between CCDs and IO is also gold but you can see that some of the liquid indium must have flown across this area, which is not normal. I deleted about 30 to 40 AM5 CPUs so far, and none of them looked like this. And not normal are also these holes and craters, which we can see on the bottom of the heat spreader. And now you could also think that this could be a manufacturing defect, some kind of quality issue that AMD might have during production, I personally don't think that's the case. I don't think that this CPU had some manufacturing defect. And the reason for my theory we can find on top of the CPU dies. And the same kind of holes and craters which we saw on the heat spreader we can find now on the chip. Same thing, same area and we can also see the like gold layer shining through from underneath from the chip. And one of these holes, like on the left, the bigger one is especially interesting because if you look at the surface of the indium, you can see that most of it is like mud. And this is due to like the deleting process where we moved the IHS slightly, 
but this hole you can see it's shiny and you will only get this shiny surface on the indium if it melted. And this is quite interesting because this means that in this area, in this hole or crater, the indium must have been so hot that it actually melted and flew away. The odd part is still that indium requires about 160 degrees Celsius to be liquid. And at this temperature, any CPU is usually dead. That's something, especially with Skylake X, we had several times when we were experimenting with TJMX offset, where you could increase the safe temperature from like 105 degrees Celsius to 115 or 125. And a lot of CPUs, they would die at 125. So I don't see how a CPU can, can, see, can reach 160 degrees Celsius. It's, it's so obscure. And also you have to keep in mind that your CPU is also getting cooled. That's also a, like an interesting aspect because he was using an MSI Core Liquid 280R. We know that the 240R and 360R, some of them had issues. I'm not sure about the 280R, but even if like the pump was not working or anything, I mean, you still have the pump head on there and all the liquid would have to evaporate to exceed 100 degrees Celsius because I mean, you have water inside and as long as there's water, and it starts to evaporate, all of the water would have to be gone to exceed this temperature. And it's, I would say it's quite unlikely. And then still, CPUs typically have safety measures inside to not exceed these temperatures, which is, yeah, it's just very odd. And if you ever played around with liquid metal, for example, because going back on these like hot spots and also these empty spots, which we saw on the CCDs, if you use liquid metal, and you apply it and you forget like one square millimeter, you can easily get extreme hotspots and temperature issues. You would see a core hitting 95 degrees Celsius and this would cause the CPU to throttle, which then again causes the CPU to consume less power, which then makes it harder to hit like 160 degrees Celsius, which I, or which is the reason why I don't think that it's a manufacturing defect. It's a lot of factors that go into that that don't really make sense. One factor could be the board. Theoretically, some boards could disable these safety measures. As I said before, he was using an Aros Master. I thought I have one. I only have an Aros Extreme. So yeah, it's not exactly the same scenario, which is unfortunate, but I'm just going to use this 7600X on this Aros Extreme and see what happens if we like take off the cooler while it's running, see how the safety measures like react. I'll, I also want to point out that he was not overclocking his CPU, like no modifications, nothing, only loaded expo profile. So that's our testing setup, the Aorus Extreme. I have an AIO mounted with a tiny bit of thermal paste and also just two screws so I can easily remove them and take off the AIO while it's running. Okay. Well, that's quite a lot hotter than I expected. Uh, wait, what? So I will now unmount the AIO. Now checking the temperatures should increase quite quickly. Honestly, that was more than I expected because we all know of the like 95 degrees Celsius limit on the AMD Ryzen CPUs and for whatever reason, like this was 20 more than usually. I will investigate further. I now adjusted the PBO temperature limit to 95 degrees Celsius. I think that's the stock value. It was set to auto, so I'm not quite sure. Let's see. System is sitting back in Windows and I'm now going to remove the AIO again. So still, even with this limit, like why can this CPU get so hot on this board? I flashed to a newer BIOS version. Previously it was F5A, now it's F8. Still very high CPU temperature, that's possible. Just to double check the temperature values and where it like shuts down, I'm double checking with this MSI ACE board. So I'm going to proceed to remove the AIO on the MSI board. Very interesting because it seems like we will see the same temperature region also way above like 95 until it shuts down. I will now try this like brand new sealed 7600 non-X. Seems to be very similar with the 7600 non-X. I mean, personally, I thought because AMD also lists 95 degrees Celsius as max spec, I thought this would like throttle earlier or like shut down earlier. But it seems to be the same kind of behavior.
at least both boards behaved exactly the same, which is a good indicator that it's probably supposed to be this way. I didn't check this before. You probably also didn't. Like, why would you take off a cooler to check the max temperature it reaches before it shuts down? That's typically something you don't do. But everything seems to be kind of normal, so it's probably also not the board, at least, I mean, checking with the hours extreme. That means that we probably won't get any further from here. It's still a very obscure case that a CPU can reach this kind of temperature to unsolar and kill itself. Max, thank you very much for providing this special CPU to us. Have fun with your new X3D CPU. I also enjoyed like looking into this and maybe analyzing some surfaces and stuff. I hope you also got some maybe interesting insights. And if you have a theory why this could have happened, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.